Welcome back to The Breakfast. Uh, we're moving now on uh, to talk more about security challenges across the country. The DSS put out a news uh, briefing yesterday warning Nigerians to be aware of uh, a possible um, um, uh, persons in the society that might be trying to incite religious crisis and violence across the country. They also warned that certain places may be attacked and Nigerians should be on the lookout for these elements in society that uh, might be trying to create these um, um, religious um, issues in the country. We've invited this morning to speak with us Mr. Achike Chude. Uh, good morning. Thank you very much for joining us. It's a pleasure. Good morning. We also have uh, Mr. Shei Adetayo, who's a, a retired principal officer, principal staff officer at the DSS. Thank you so much for joining us also, Mr. Adetayo. Thank you so much and good morning. All right. Um, one question that we, you know, had asked earlier, um, you know, was you know, what the Nigerian citizens are expected to do with information like this. But I'm going to start with Achike Chude. I want to ask... Um, about something I also mentioned earlier, is it for you disappointing that in 2021, we still are at a place where religious and tribal uh, crises can still be occurring in Nigeria? Is it disappointing that we've not been able to, you know, even through successive governments, since 1999, we got into a democracy, we've not been able to unite Nigerians enough to, you know, ensure that these things are things of the past? Well, there is a saying that uh, the more things um, change, the more they remain the same. The more things seem to change, the more they remain the same. Uh, and so from that, but I, I wouldn't even say that uh, things have actually remained the same because uh, the reality is that um, society is dynamic. So there's always this evolutionary movement uh, in spite of every society. Uh, if, if, if I have to look at um, what has gone on in the past few years, I would say that we have rather declined. And I'll just give one instance. At the June 12, 1993 election, at just to be the fairest in the country, uh, was an election that was uh, conducted by essentially, you know, um, Muslim Muslim uh, tickets. And of course, I remember the Khan led uh, Archbishop Okoje led translation of Nigeria, endorsing wholeheartedly a Muslim Muslim ticket at that particular point in time. Uh, that never happened. That would not happen under the circumstances today. And this is how many years down the line. So what it tells you is that uh, we, we, it would appear that we had some level of uh, tolerance or greater tolerance in the past. We seem to have a better, you know, uh, more nationally disposed political, you know, elites than what we have here today. And, um, uh, and, and the reality is that uh, it is happening because... Um, uh, these fault lines that we have, ethnic, religious, ethno-religious sentiments, are major weapons in the hands of the ruling class, who having run out of ideas about how to get to power, how to consolidate in power, you know, now have gone back to the old age primordial, uh, you know, parochial sentiment of using base um, uh, issues such as religion, ethnicity, geopolitics. Uh, right. to further consolidate themselves in power by making sure that the people are permanently, de you know, divided. So, yes, if you're talking about 60 years of um, independence, I am sorely disappointed. Hmm. If you're talking about uh, 21 years of uh, so-called unbroken democracy, I am sorely disappointed. But when you look at the kind of uh, political class that we have in this country, I'm not disappointed because you can only, uh, you know, you, they, they are, it is the fruits you know, that they have, that they are showing. All right, hold All on. right, Mr. Achike Chile, we'll come back to you in a moment, but let's bring in Mr. Shei Adetayo now. You are a retired uh, staff of the DSF, principal staff officer. So I would like to ask you, when security agencies get wind of information like this, that there is a likely threat in some parts of the country, you know, with religious undertones, what do they do with this information? Okay, so uh, thank you very much. Um, there is something I want to call your attention to, which has to do with, uh, you know, part of the trade craft in intelligence and intelligence management. If you look at surveillance, because that's principally what they do, they place surveillance everywhere. They try to monitor. And one of the things you use surveillance as a tool to do is uh, when you know that somebody is about to commit an offense or commit a crime, so you place such a person under surveillance. And there are different types of method you can use. And one of the methods is that you can do an open surveillance. You 
as surveilling the person and then you will make it the person to know that I'm actually watching you. It is part of the tradecraft. Someone is monitoring somebody that wants to do something and when you turn your back, you see the guy, the guy smile at you, I'm looking at you. So it's, it's part of the tradecraft. And that's what the DSS have been able to do in this instance. And they've been doing that occasionally like that to let the would-be perpetrators of crimes or heinous crimes like this to know that we're actually watching. We know this is what you are doing and we want you to know that we know. And we want you to know that we're actually watching you. And what you get uh, from that is that um, it prevents the person to go, uh, from going ahead to do what he plans to do. Because now you let him know. We we'll, sure we'll forget the fact that a few days ago there was an alarm raised at uh, Reverend Cooker that uh, some people are trying to incite um, religious attack against his persons and uh, because of what uh, he said in his homily in December. It may not be unconnected with this. And uh, we need to understand that uh, Nigeria is uh, we're in, a dire, we're in a, a dire strait at this moment and any forms of uh, a crisis, especially with religious connotation at this time in our national life is not the best for us. And it may not you know, uh, give us a desired outcome. And if you look at the the report, uh, it, it you know four northern states, uh, two states from the south side, uh, well, from the southwest, and a state from um, the south south was specifically mentioned. This is not to say that um, other states are not included, but they have they must have had credible intelligence to suggest that um, there are. Either state or non-state actors that are behind these and want to perpetrate this, specifically with full soldiers and the machinery is already put in place in those particular uh, particular states. Um, so, Mr. Shaya Detayo, can I follow up on something you said? Yes, we now understand that okay. you know the DSS puts out this information, you know, as part of surveillance to let the people know that they are being watched. But how about you know letting communicating this information to these sus suspects or suspected attackers, you know, directly? Because some people would argue that it will create panic generally for the Nigerian society. Yeah, see, um, intelligence uh, management business all over the world is not like one plus one equals to two. No. Depends on what you want to achieve at a particular point in time. Now, we, we don't know the preponderance of uh, intelligence that the DSS are having. And um, the course of action that they will take is based on what the amount of intelligence that they have, what would be the best action, cause of action? You see, looking at it from outside, we'll, at times we we'll look at what they do. I will say, oh, these people, they are foolish. They, this is not what they are, they're supposed to do. But we don't know the information they have. And when you're talking about this, you see, there are, some, there are instances where, yes, you have information. Informations are from credible uh, sources. The sources, you don't want to expose your sources because if you carry out certain actions, you will expose the sources. And when you expose some, you burn your sources. You will not be able to get more information or intelligence from that angle again. And that you have already closed a, a door that have actually been giving you something credible. All right. So, and it's a, in intelligence management, sources protection or source protection is key. They may decide to say that okay, because we need to protect our sources, we will not approach these people this way. We will go through to let them know that we are. They are putting all other measures in place to counter the effort of whatever those people are doing, and they are waiting for them to cross a particular threshold, all right. then so they the might turn it into the next level of um, uh, arrest. All right, so let, let's go back to uh, Achike Chude. Um, and I, I want to ask now, um, from your assessment of this whole story and, and um, you know these issues, what would you say might be the goal here? Um, the, the report says, you know, that religious, you know, uh, bodies might be attacked, um, you know, violence might be perpetrated in certain places. Um, but what do you think might be the main goal here? Um, is there any political, you know, uh, direction that this might be taking or is just people trying to create chaos and put fear in Nigerians? It's, it's chaos and uh, it's chaos uh, crisis, you know, anarchy. Uh, this is these are the things that uh, they seek to achieve, and uh, 
And do not forget that the terrorists or people involved in terrorist acts want to, they have certain goals, especially if uh, they are ideologically motivated. Of course, you look at uh, the spate of uh, terrorism or the acts of terrorism in this country, and then uh, you also tell you, that, um, you also realize that uh, there is an underlying religious uh, you know, ideology behind some of the acts of terror that we have been having. Um, and so this, I think, is a part of, if you remember the bombing that took place in Niger State, I think one of the first major against, you know, a Christian church. I think what uh, those group of people who did that, committed that, that crime, wanted to achieve was to ensure that uh, we had some kind of um, religious instability in the country. But I think uh, the religious, at uh, the level of, of, uh, of uh, trying to stoke up religious uh, crisis, they have not been able to, you know, achieve uh, so much. So, of course, there's also the fact that uh, there's an allegation that uh, people of certain ethnic stock, you know, uh, want to overrun parts of the country, you know, uh, and then settle in Nigeria. We don't know exactly how true it is. Some of these things you cannot uh, discard. But I just wanted to refer briefly to some of the things, uh, you know, she said. I agree, you know, people will tell you that um, when it comes to espionage and the intelligence gathering, that the DSS has been very, very good in the country. But the reality is that um, the efficacy, you know, the ability of uh, your intelligence, you know, uh, agency of any country to deliver uh, on intelligence, proper intelligence, is also dependent on the line understanding and the limits and the tendencies of the government of the day. So if you have a government that is suspected to some extent or some level of uh, you know, bias in terms of uh, how it handles uh, the security objectives of uh, the nation of the government, then you find out that uh, you have an, a, a DSS, for instance, in this matter that is hamstrung by the inability of the government to you know, act and to work in a particular manner in tandem with the need to respond to some of the uh, security imperatives in the country. Do not forget at the time when, when uh, you know, uh, the former uh, leader of, uh, what's his name now, of uh, the uh, Boko Haram was captured. The ADSS had been trailing for quite some time, eventually captured him. But, you know, um, eventually, you know, captured him because they considered him a danger to the body policy of this country. But the phone call from some very powerful people in the government ensured that the man, uh, Mohammed Yusuf, that the man was released. Now, in that instance, the DSS had done its own part. What happened eventually at the end of the day? It became, the Boko Haram has become what it is today because at a particular point in time, why the DSS, in, you know, uh, uh, that, uh, that were responsible for monitoring such situations and make, making sure that they nip it in the board, why they did their own part? The government of the day, for whatever reason, failed in carrying out its own responsibility as a government. You know, so it is always easy to sometimes to blame the security forces, the intelligence agencies, and so on. But believe me, they cannot rise above the proclivities of the you know the tendencies of the government of the day. Okay. And so All it's right. important that we that, that would you know point this out. Yeah. Okay, um, Mr. Atrika Chude, let's look at the angle of religious tolerance. Over the years, we've seen you know attacks on churches and mosques and uh, most recently that one that occurred in 2018 the mm -hmm. attack on a catholic church in Benue state where over 17 people were murdered in the church how how then do we fix this seeing that both religions claim to advocate for peace well i i, I think i think um, if you ask me without wanting to be sectarian i, I think that um, you know the 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 group is um, linked to the acts of terrorism in this country and making a claim about Islam. And of course, we know that there are very wonderful Muslims around, peaceful Muslims, and have a lot of them as friends. And the vast majority of Muslims are very peaceful people. But perhaps a lot of them are not doing so much to reclaim their own religion from the Islamist radicals who do not espouse from what the good Muslims have told us, who do not in any way espouse the true virtues of a Muslim. So they need to speak up more. And I do not think that they have been speaking up so much, you know, uh, with regards to some of the killings that have been taking place in this country. And the good thing about it is that, um, you know, all of the bombings, I guess, and of course, again, you'll find out that even moderate Muslims are also victims of uh, the attacks of some of these radical uh, Muslim, you know, Islamist uh, organizations who believe that uh, they are not a Muslim enough. You understand? So I, I believe that both sides should team up. You know, and they work together towards uh, and, and explain to their people what you know is at stake. 
I, I, I believe that the response of uh, the Christians, you know, has been commendable because a lot of Christian uh, churches have been bombed by a group supposed, supposedly affiliated to Islamism, though we know it's a radical, radical Islamism. But the Christians have not been able to respond in a way that would have stoked the divisions further in this country. And I think that that is what is expected. Right. So I, I think a lot more needs to be done. Uh, to ensure religious harmony about, uh, you know, across uh, both uh, divides. Okay. Uh, back to Shea Adetayo. Um, with your time that you spent, you know, with the DSS, I'm sure you, you know, have, of course, a, a lot of experience with information and intelligence gathering and how uh, those things should play out. So I, I want to know, you know, about a process where, or if this makes sense, you know, that the DSS... Uh, you know, is able to gather the information, the intelligence that is necessary, um, maybe also plant informants, you know, in the midst of these uh, crisis makers, um, and get some of them arrested quietly uh, and charged, you know, with, you know, the, whatever, you know, uh, crimes Attempts that they're, to... that they're yes. um, you know, found, you know, wanting with. Um, it, does the DSS operate this way? Is there, is there a possibility that it can also take those type of actions uh, to infiltrate some of these okay. small cells that might be trying to co uh, create a, a chaos? And of course, know where they get their, their, their weapons from, know where they get their information from, know who gives them orders. These are important questions, um, Mr. Detayo. Who is sponsoring yes, them? Yes. Who is giving them the go-ahead? Who wants to create their, um, you know, this crisis? If they are members of the political space, get them arrested. Why don't we ever see these things happen? Okay, um, thank you very much. Um, let me assure you that um, they are doing that and far beyond that. That is what that is what the uh, intelligence business is all about. It's about you infiltrating, planting sources, planting agents, and the rest. And then I can assure you that yes, yes, it's everywhere. Yeah. I would say yes, it's everywhere. It doesn't mean that they have their own direct personnel everywhere. Areas where they can't enter directly or for reasons of resources or because of the nature of those organizations, they have people in there that um, are their own sources that um, give, give them direct uh, line of sight into what is happening. Ms. Adetayo, I, I don't know if you, you can add this because we're almost out of time, but I want you to quickly add this to your, to your questions. And I'm not sure if you would be able to answer you know, this freely. But is it disappointing for you as a Nigerian that you know, the DSS has not been able to, to, till now, identify one, two, three persons who have been sponsors of terrorism and insurgency in Nigeria and banditry over time and charge them to court? Does that I, in, in any way, you know, disappoint you? No, I can, I can tell that they've done that, they've, they've done so much. Now, when the federal government is laying claim that they've put an head to terrorism, that there's no bombing in Nigeria, would you think who's the credit? It is the DSS. There are two things that we're fighting in this country, terrorism and insurgency. Insurgency is for the military to handle. The military has their own intelligence network to handle the field work. Terrorism are built ourselves in the community and DSS are responsible to infiltrate those cells. They've cleared most of these cells. That is why you've not seen bombings in Abuja or in Lagos. If I tell you how many people they have been they have arrested, and you see, some of these things are done secretly. And um, you they and they have their reasons for not taking some people to court because they are still working on them because there are several other cells that must be broken. And All as right. long as they keep those people, they continue to exploit them, get more information. When they get more information from the field, they take it back to these people and say, this is what we have. We did more information on this. And they help them with more. You see, intelligence business is not one plus one equals to two. It's a trade craft. And okay. if you can give credit to the CIA, to the MICs, we should give credit to the Nigerian Absolute, Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, and okay. and I'll, tell you, I'll tell you, that's really comforting, um, what you've said. Um, it's, it's comforting for me in knowing that there is a lot of work that is being done behind these scenes and there are reasons why it may not make the news media every other day. Yes. But, um, I'm hoping that they also do more. Mm. But thanks, thanks for sharing that. Yes, and just in 30 seconds, uh, Mr. Shea and uh, Chude, could you, could you let us know, the DSS has put out this information now. I'm sure everyone is on their toes, both the guilty and the innocent. So just in 30 seconds, share with me what religious leaders and religious centers can do about this. Well, I, I, I would say that um, you know, uh, religious leaders, of course, should also convey the same information to their people, um, to their worshippers, to also be careful. 
uh, watch out for suspicious packages. We have had that, you know, in the past where they tell you watch out for suspicious, suspicious packages and then also give a, you know, notice and the information of what is to be done even within the church premises and then they themselves will have to be careful because if prominent religious leaders of a particular faith, for instance, are killed in this process, it could exacerbate the crisis. So they also have to make sure that they keep themselves safe uh, right. in order to avoid uh, that kind of uh, situation. All right, Mr. From Aditayo. My own, um, from my own end, I would say they should preach peace and they should demonstrate it openly. I want to see a, a, a situation where G and I will visit Reverend Fadakuka and they show the whole world that we are not fighting, we don't have issues. This will send signal to whoever that wants to use those uh, that issue to foment trouble. Hmm. All right. Very succinct, straight to the point Brilliant. and well noted. Thank you very much, Mr. Shea Aditayo, a retired DS DSO of the DSS, and uh, Mr. Achike Chude, uh, a social commentator. Thanks again for your time. And um, Achike Chude, apologies, he's the chairman, joint, uh, or Thank deputy you. chairman, joint action front. Thank you so yes. much. Uh, uh, for joining us. Uh, apologies for not introducing you. you properly earlier. Good morning to you. Thank you. All right, so um, our, our next guest is standing by. We're going to be talking money this time, following the money between debts. Oh my God, <laughs> big issue. Let's talk about that after this break. <laughs>